Department of State benefits from Match on Card through the ease and simplicity of adhering to the F FDCC, the Federal Desktop Core Configuration Guidelines. Prior to Match on Card, Department of State had terribly complex requirements on passwords. The previous password cannot be reused for the past 24 times. It must be 12 characters or more long. Complexity guidelines include uh, alphanumeric and special characters. So obviously you can see that users cannot consistently remember those passwords, which raised the requirements on the help desk and a lot of costs to Department of State. By implementing Match on Card, they've reduced the complexity, they've met the FDCC guidelines, and anecdotally, they've uh, attributed a savings of seven to $10 million per year by implementing this technology. As background to Department of State, we actually started working with the PKI program office in 2003 to meet their biometric objectives. The biometric implementation of Match on Card allows Department of State to meet the FDCC guidelines, adhere to cybersecurity standards and awareness, and to streamline their network authentication. We've seen a rapid acceleration of their deployments due to recent release of funds by the President Obama administration, as well as this increased security and awareness um, by the government. And we expect to see this not only within Department of State, but other government agencies in 2010. The funds provided by ARA, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, certainly contributed to the success we saw in 2009, and I fully expect that that will continue for 2010. In addition, President Obama raised awareness for cybersecurity initiatives. And these caused uh, several agencies already in 2009 to begin utilizing our precise 200 series readers and our precise match on card to provide strong authentication and multi-factor authentication. And finally, the HSPD 12, Presidential Directive 12, enacted by President Bush after 9-11, uh, established the issuance of personal identity verification cards for all government contractors and employees. This means that for the U.S., for the first time ever, we have a critical mass of reasonably sized smart cards. The important thing is they're all containing standardized biometrics. There are several cybersecurity initiatives. The cornerstone of President Obama's initiative is privacy and authentication. Precise Biometrics is well situated to provide this in a flexible way to both commercial and government enterprises. In addition, President Obama's cybersecurity report stipulates the use of NTSC's 2008 report on biometrics, specifying or suggesting biometrics be used for all identity management strategies. The deployment of 50,000 readers obviously raises several complexities and challenges. Uh, first, in terms of logistics, acquiring, deploying those readers, but also in terms of the complexity of introducing biometry across several different environments and cultures, all the way from the Ukraine to Thailand. So you have all of these different factors. Uh, Department of State has done a commendable job in that they have early on re seen the requirement for training and for administrators that are trained in biometric enrollment. Logistically, our readers are sent from our manufacturing facility in Atlanta to the DC receiving locations where they're screened via x-ray and other security measures, inventoried and stored by diplomatic security. At the time of deployment, there is a dedicated system administrator and enrollment team that go out with the readers to each location, help enroll and deploy the, the biometry.